Swati Ka from Thailand. My name is Kim. Welcome to my vlog. I've really enjoyed living in Thailand for the last three years and some things have come as um, a culture shock or a change in culture um, but actually I feel really at home here um, even more so than in my own country the US. I just love the Sabai Sabai culture here. That being said it's not easy for all Westerners or people from other countries and cultures there are things that are different about living here that you need to keep in mind when you come here and there are definitely some things that I needed to remember that I, I didn't know about even though I do love Thailand and I love the culture here. Okay number one is don't touch a monk or if you're a female don't touch a monk and there are some rare female monks so if you're a male don't touch a female monk this is probably the um, thing that we hear about the most and it's part of their religion and customs um, it's their belief to keep themselves pure that we should not touch a monk you can feel free to offer alms or give donations to them they'll have a little uh, urn that they will hold out and if you are traveling on a bus uh, make sure to give your seat to the monks and make sure if you're female you can't sit right next to the monk uh, so just something to keep in mind you can still talk to monks and interact with them they have a really interesting perspective and it's kind of intriguing for us as foreigners you will see monks out every morning early in the morning they will go out to collect their alms you see them all over Thailand. When I first came to Thailand and I saw the temples, wow, this is beautiful, it's amazing. Now I see them all the time, I don't even notice them. There are temples all around Thailand and Buddhism is a big part of the religion and the culture in Thailand. Number two is don't step on money. This is actually considered a crime and uh, it's because the feet are the bottommost part of the body they're considered the most disgusting ugly part of the body and so if you touch something with your foot that's um, a little offensive and you don't want to place the bottom of your foot you don't want to face it towards someone else or especially not towards a buddha statue that's considered offensive and then especially not on money because on the money is the face of the king and the monarchy and that also goes to the rule that you should not say anything bad about the monarchy. There's a rule here called Les Magistre, and it means that you cannot say anything degrading or that goes against the monarchy. And it actually is a law that is enforced here. And so you have to be very careful about what you say. Um, yeah, just avoid saying anything bad about the monarchy. It, it can actually lead to fines and prison time if you are caught, so be careful. This is something that could be enforced. It's also not a good idea to talk about politics very much in Thailand. Um, where I'm from in the US, of course, people talk about politics all the time. They talk about Trump and Biden and whoever is up there and they will express their opinions very freely. but it's a good idea to be to not do that here in Thailand especially as a foreigner there are certain words or phrases that saying are uh, even considered a criminal offense and could result in fines or even prison time so it's just a good idea to avoid talking about this subject it's interesting here people don't really like to talk about politics very much maybe partly because you'll get in big trouble if you do but um, unlike in the US, uh, people don't talk about this so much. They Instead, they just talk about ordinary daily things. They care more about food and about what happens every day and the people in your family and the relationships. And so they'll talk about this more. And different things are considered offensive here compared to the US. So here, you have to be careful about talking about politics and um, the monarchy, you, you shouldn't really talk about those. But on the other hand, things that are considered offensive in the US are not considered offensive here in Thailand. People will talk very openly about your appearance, about your salary, about your um, relationship status. Even when they first get to know you, they'll ask you like, 
what's your salary? Are you married? Uh, all this stuff. And they'll comment very freely. In the US, you should not say you are fat. Oh no. <laughs> People will get really upset if they're called fat, but here in Thailand, they'll just say, oh yeah, that person is chubby, fat, um, they're tall, slim, ugly, beautiful. <laughs> they will say all these things that we would not say in the US. Number three, don't touch people on the head. And just while the feet are considered the worst part of the body, the head is considered the holiest, most sacred part of the body. And so it's um, offensive to touch someone on the head. Um, it's okay if it's a little kid, that's okay. But once you get to adults, then it's a good idea to avoid touching someone on the head. And um, I've talked about this in my video about greetings, um, but it's a always a good idea to do the why. The why is how we greet people. We place our hands together and lean forward to say Sawatika for a girl or Sawatika for a man. You can see more information about greeting someone in Thai um, in my video. I'll put the link in the description below. Okay, number four of things that you should not do in Thailand is ignore the etiquette for visiting temples and other places. So when you go to the temple, it's a good idea to cover your shoulders and your knees. Um, dress modestly. That will show respect to the temple and the culture here. Also, when you go into many shops and homes, uh, take off your shoes. You'll see by the door if people are taking their shoes off. So take off your shoes. That's common in almost all Thai houses for you to take off your shoes. I think that as foreigners, we are very privileged to be able to come to Thailand and it's our responsibility to follow up and know how to follow the right etiquette and show respect for the culture here in Thailand. The Thai people, they will really appreciate you too if you show that you care about your, their culture and you're interested in it. Um, that will make them even more friendly and excited to interact with you. Okay, number five, the last one of the things not to do in Thailand is be closed-minded. On the other hand, it's a good idea to be open-minded. This culture has a lot of things that are quite different than other cultures, especially Western cultures. And it can be a little surprising and shocking sometimes to foreigners. Um, but I think it's best to have an open mind. That will just make your stay more relaxing and enjoyable in Thailand and you will learn and grow so much more from the experience. I've seen some foreigners who come into Thailand and even teachers who come to teach and they believe that they are superior to the Thai ways and that just makes it a hard, difficult experience for them and the Thais. Actually, I think that um, while everything is definitely not perfect in Thailand. I think that the West has a lot that they can learn from Thailand and the culture here. And so just come with an open mind and you will be really enriched and grow as a person. But I will also admit that things can be frustrating. Uh, I know I've gone through it before where um, there's a lack of communication or I am waiting and things are just not working out to how I had planned and so I've really had to learn to go with the flow more and be more open-minded and willing to let go of my plans because that often is the case here in Thailand. Um, people don't plan so much. That was probably the hardest thing for me. I'm a big planner or I was before. I just love to check off all the boxes as I go through. That doesn't really work in Thailand. I had to throw that mindset out the window, um, especially as a teacher. Things are scheduled last minute or canceled last minute. I will show up, where's my class? No one is here. <laughs> they didn't tell me. I won't even know the last day of school sometimes. And this can be the same with friends too. They'll just phone me up. Are oh, you want to go to the waterfall now? What, when, now? Oh, okay. And so, um, 
I've had to learn to go more with the flow and be more open-minded. And this will definitely make it much easier for you and enjoyable. And it will help you in your other areas of life as well. So I hope you enjoyed my video about five things not to do in Thailand. Um, I'm definitely not an expert, so uh, if you really want to be informed, I recommend doing your own research. This is not an exhaustive list. There's more things that you need to keep in mind. I just listed the biggest ones um, and that I have personally experienced. And even after living here for three years, I'm still learning and noticing things. I feel like this experience is still so fulfilling and full for me even after so much time here. I'm still learning so much and so I'm really grateful for that. So I hope you will come to the land of smiles and please let me know in the comments below what you think and list any other things that I missed in my five things not to do in Thailand. And I We'll just say Sawatika and welcome to the land of smiles.